Gur goes crazy and stuff. Um, ah, yeah, Tr Eric Trueheart script. This was uh, originally written from an idea by Chris Graham. It was just a very scant idea, and he boarded on it then with Sean Murray. Those two went to art school together, and they, uh, they always wanted to work together, and this was their one chance. Uh, but Chris would always run around. Chris was absolutely fascinated with the idea of Gur and of Gur's personality. He saw Gur being this light little lovable character, had a very deep, dark inside. And he always would joke about Gur, you know. Uh, he always wanted to see Gur out on the town. Uh, I always thought there should be a Gur out on a town show. Just, you know, sort of like the Simpsons episode uh, where they had a minute, you know, everybody got a minute on the show, a minute long tale of what the character was about. Should have had 11 minutes of, you know, 11 different stories of Gur out on the town. Just little vignettes of what he does. And Chris always loved to have the idea that he's just the most lovable character. But he, of course, is this robot that's supposed to be going out killing people or, you know, carrying out Zim's will or the Urkin will by subjugating people. So while Gur loves going out getting drinks, he always knows there's a backstory behind Gur. You know, he shows up with slushies or, uh, or uh, you know, suck monkeys and, and snacks and DVDs and other things. He's obviously gone out on the town. And a lot of times he's out on the town without his dog outfit on. You can see he's walking around outside as a robot. So the whole thing was... With Chris, was that he loved to have this fantasy that Gurr would walk around just doing random acts of kindness and violence. And he always wanted to have Gurr go out. You know, you just see Gurr picking flowers, giving flowers, you know, going into an old folks' home, giving some old folks some flowers, and then strangling the old folks with his pillow, you know, until they're dead. And then he'd walk out and he'd do something else again, you know, sort of almost Frankenstein esque. You know, he'd play with a girl in the park. And then he'd cut her head off, you know. So there's this whole thing going on with Gurr being this happy-go-lucky uh, nice guy slash murderer who was just absolutely psychotic, but happily so. I mean, he killed people with a smile on his face very innocently. Uh, and that's that's where the idea, I think, for this whole show came up. The whole thing about Gurr being crazy. And uh, I think Eric came up with a very good idea here where... Uh, Basically, if you negate Gurr's bad side, or his good side, if you negate Gurr's bad side, you allow this horrible other side to come through, this bad personality. And he becomes a very judgmental murderer, actually to the point where he even questions his own master. So, yeah, I think it was a very crafty idea, actually. But it would always be nice to see Gurr actually killing people. And the action sequence in the end could have been a little bit longer, I think, to sort of show that. Just a bit more violence and mayhem. But that might just be the boards as well. Kyle Menke was the storyboard supervisor for this episode as, uh, as Louis Del Carmen left for a vacation. And uh, a lot of this is Kyle's here. Kyle coming back to do all this. His sort of acting. Very fun. Very playful. And uh, it was a good combo to have Sean Murray. I think this was done at the end of a season. So Sean Murray, I think, was also leaving. He just turned in thumbnails. He was taking a vacation. And Chris uh, Chris did probably the bulk of the episode. And then uh, uh, Kyle came in and cleaned up Sean's thumbnails and basically board supervised the whole thing. Got it all together and ready for timing and animatics and such. Um, after the script come the boards. Well, there's a record for the voices. And then comes the boards. And the boards basically flesh out how everything moves, where everything goes, how it acts. Pretty much puts the bulk of the storytelling into the story uh, that's previously was just a script. Uh, while the actors are acting, all the bodily movements and expressions are from the board artists. All the staging of how things play out and move and work, and sometimes jokes and such are, are made by the board artists. And then the boards are taken. They're sort of three-panel, like a comic strip almost, if you look at them. And these three panels on each page, and there could be hundreds of pages, especially on Zim, having the largest boards ever, probably anywhere. Uh, the boards almost being key animation on Zim. Uh, they would go into an animatic where they were scanned into a computer, and they were made into like a sort of a film strip going along with the dialogue that was pre-recorded. And from there you have a basic slug for time, and then the timers will go from that and time out the actual show. Um, so that's basically the method of animation. Once you have the boards and the timing together so that everybody knows in Korea the specific movements and you have all your designs done up, then you 
hand it all off to Korea, and they can make the full thing. So they carry on the work that we started and basically defined for them. The pipe joke was very nice when Zim kept feeding the pipe in. I don't think that was originally intention in the boards, but somebody like in timing, like a um, Charlie Cooper or uh, or Julie uh, Hasaguchi, they would put in that. You know, they keep feeding it in. So there's always in animation a large amount of effort that's being put in. And there's a lot of times that people can add to the humor or the drama of a show just through their their own work, their timing or their storyboarding or their designs or their writing. So there's a lot of chances to do interesting things. And people can either add to a show or they can subtract from a show by not doing enough. On Zim, most of the time people were adding. And that was excellent. You rarely get that on animation in America. Even if the show doesn't look its best, you know, at its peak, it isn't animated that well or the specific drawings, the layouts aren't that good, at least you... You get the sense that people are trying and people are doing, and you're entertained by all the information that's thrown at you, all the humor and the and just everything that's put in into the show, whether it's background detail or or jokes or just the timing of how something moves. Now I remember I went through the show. I, I don't know. I was so acclimated to. It. I think Jonan was too. Just the whole idea of. of Gur being so insane and, and very evil, which you never saw before, that when we finally saw this in the final mix, which is where we put the sound to the picture and basically wrap the whole thing up and ship it out, you know, we sat there watching the show as we're adding sound effects or, or pitching things up and down. <laughs> and Jonan turned to me, which is exactly what I was thinking at that moment, turns to me, he goes, oh, God, we've just lost another million viewers. <laughs> I think he was right. The show just seems so oppressive uh it takes this cute character that all these like little girls love and you know just people love it. it's just a very fun character girl and turns him into just the just the most vile murderous creep <laughs> and he really becomes hostile and i think it was such a change of character uh, he and i both felt at that time that it was just <laughs> it was so anti-zim Again, coloring was just difficult in here. I'm very upset at the end uh, when I saw the color come back. It was just gray on gray. These little pictures you can see in there, you can see a little dib monkeyish thing. I had drawn that as a cast off drawing. I forget what I was doing. I drew somebody a dib head. It was the most horrible drawing. Chris Graham got his hands on it and he kept using it for everything. And somehow I drew a little monkey body on it. I don't know why. That thing ended up on birthday cakes, uh, cards was on his wall he blew it up he pasted it all over the studio and then it's there in the show you can see one of those one of those little pictures is that dib drawing just cleaned up a little bit the worst drawing i ever did shows up again and again that was his justice to get back at me for making him work on this show now this action sequence here this uh this horror sequence we, I wish we had more time for it. Again, in Zim, there was very little time for for things like this. These great tense moments where you could do something that was very Hitchcock or something that was more old school, where you have a lot of pauses as one character is out to kill, silently stalking another. And the victim, or the character that will be the victim, is just having a hard time dealing with his own fear. And you kind of have, you have it there, but it's just not... It's not played up as well as it could be because you need a lot of time to play that up. You need a lot of silence. Everything needs to be slowed down. 11 minutes just didn't do it. You almost need a half hour for these sorts of shows.